All right. Hey, y'all. It's a skeptic autopsy and whatnot. And today I decided to review uh, Disney's Disney Pixar's recent film, Soul, uh, starring Jamie Foxx as Jeff Gardner. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it was released somewhere around last month or this month, if, I am, if I'm pretty sure I haven't I've been keeping track. But, you know, I just literally saw it like an hour ago. And, you know, after I finished a lot of assignments that, you know, my professors were shoving to my fucking face like there were, like, something. I don't know. I, I can't find an analogy. But, you know, I'm finally, like, kind of, like, free for the moment. So I said... Why not put time into something I actually like that I never get time to do because I'm always busy? And, you know, how I'm a movie-watching um, mother uh, mother, o, uh, mother F over here. So, you know, put their time into watching the movie, you know, that's been out for a while. And, you know, after I'm done with it, you know, I jump right on this mic. <laughs> Pause. Jump right on this mic. And, you know, do this review, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, this, that's just pretty much, you know, pretty much the whole uh, situation with this and shit. Because I know some people were saying, like, Hey, bro, but you never on YouTube, guys. Never. You're always busy. But, you know, I finally got some time to put into it. So, yeah, here it is. Now, I seen the release of this trailer, like, last year for Soul. And pretty much my first thoughts was like, yeah, I ain't seen this bullshit. Because for a while, Disney was kind of like on the whole live action thing right now. And quite frankly, I, 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 I ain't really feeling Disney. Not because, you know, yeah, but just period. I mean, they're too busy, you know, firing, you know, their employees from literally the only thing, one of the few things... Of this uh, year, that's actually even keeping them relevant in the first place. They're too busy firing people off of that to, you know, actually make good films. And pretty much when I saw Soul, like, a couple of years back, I'm like, uh, this shit looks like Inside Out. I mean, lo and behold, yeah, it's, it's the same the same writers that Inside Out made this, but it look, it literally looked exactly smack like this, Joan. Like, like it kind of has this Osmosis Jones, you know, type of narrative. When I saw the trailer, that was like... You know, my idea of it, and I'm like, yeah, I ain't doing this, bruh. Like, nah, it's just gonna be another movie that's just gonna throw in the pile like everything else. But, you know, I've been seeing it around. I've been seeing, you know, reviews. I, well, I didn't actually see, like, the reviews per se. I just saw, like, you know, the thumbnails and shit. People talk about it. And, you know, considering, you know, it's kind of like Black History Month and shit, and the main character happens to be black and played by a black guy. You know, I'll say might as well, why the hell not? You know what I'm saying? You know, like, I, <laughs> I mean, I already saw Judas and the Black Messiah, which I will be reviewing soon. Like, I, I got a lot to talk about that one. But, you know, I already saw that, you know, so I need my feel of, you know, brothers and media and shit. And uh, Soul was one of them. Um, when I, <sighs> when, when describing this movie... Like, period. Like, this is going to be, like, pretty much, like, a really brief review. Because, in general, at the same time, there's a lot to talk about this film. There's also not a lot to talk about this film. If if that makes any sense to you, you know. So, yeah, there's that. Um, Pretty much, the plot, the basic plot of this is, uh, is about, a, uh, it's about an inspiring musician who starts his life off as... Uh, you know, kind of a doormat of a of a school of a music teacher for for his school. You know, he ain't really seen much going on with his life, and he finally gets a gig, and you know, shit turns around. And you know, trope number one hundred twenty four. It takes a turn where he accidentally falls down a a sewer a sewer hole and dies. Like literally, like in the first like give or take five or six minutes of the film uh, of this film the main character literally drops dead so that was like really unexpected with this i mean you can say the same thing with coco when uh when uh i know i know i probably got the name wrong miguel i think that was his name 
He literally goes to the dead, the dead for stealing something you're not supposed to. And it kind of gave me that mindset. Like, this film alone, a lot of the, the, the story beats, a lot of it kind of reminds me of uh, of uh, Disney movies of past. But that's besides the point. So, yeah, the main character literally dies in, like, the first five minutes of this film. Uh, Eric, uh, and pretty much... He goes to the afterlife, pretty much, or uh, as they said it, the life before, so to speak, where which more or less the souls, where souls, unborn souls, are pretty much having their life retold over again when they resurrect by people called soul counselors, which is an obvious allegory for God or gods for the polytheistic that's watching this uh, video. So, you know, you, you kind of, like, got that off the spot, what it's all about. I mean, these people literally dictate how someone's life is going to be as soon as they uh, resurrect. So, I'm like, oh, so they're God, then. But it's like a really, you know, it's it's a, it's a soft and subtle, you know, um, allegory, which at this, film's, uh, at this film's benefit, they literally did hit the nail on the head. I guess, you know, Disney or the writer's mind just didn't want to upset any... Uh, any uh, Bible bangers or anything, or you know, any you know, people of religious uh, sex, sex sections. Yeah, I was gonna say sex, but I just can't get the word out today. <sighs> Goddamn jargon. Anyway, yeah, I guess they, you know, they, they, the whole soul counselor concept. It was obviously a soft, subtle, you know, allegory for God or gods for the polytheistic. And the way this movie did it, they did it. You know, they did it right. Because the thing about subtlety nowadays, especially in writing, in a lot of movies, it's almost it's it's almost non-existent. And pretty much I knew off the spot the soul counselors were obviously gods. But, you know, it's they, they I kind of like the fact they just didn't blatantly say it. not to, So they wouldn't upset anybody and, you know, for subtlety reasons in terms of in terms of writing. Which again, a lot of modern movies and books and TV shows are really lacking right now. And I kind of feel like that was kind of refreshing for the most part. And pretty much Jeff Gardner pretty much meets his, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He meets, he, he meets his, he meets the, the, the secondary main character of, of, of this movie uh, named um, 22. No, I didn't forget my shit is legitimately itchy, bro. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just I'm not even gonna pick this shit. I'm just gonna let it like nap up and shit. Like fuck it, you keep picking at it. You're gonna eventually pull it out the root and shit. But that, that's just a little tangent about my hair. So yeah, that's out. Yeah, pretty much she meets 22, who herself is an unborn soul, and she obviously has a really nihilistic view on life, uh, the life of mortals, and you know the whole concept of resurrection just doesn't seem to shake it for her. Until it actually happens when the two, more or less, when, when Jeff Gardner convinces her to more or less leave uh, the life before to get to Earth. And, you know, wacky shenanigans and whatnot, it, you know, goes on. But pretty much actually one of the most important parts of this film that kind of solidifies the message it was going for. Uh, we see her, you know, she's, she's in Jeff's body. Although when she talks over people, it does sound like Jeff's voice, and Jeff is in some random woman's cat, which literally just serves as just wacky, you know, comedic hijinks in this film. Uh, like the comedy in this film, although some parts did it kind of like give me a chuckle, and they were kind of fun, funny, especially when uh, Twenty Two, while she was in Jeff's body, like th uh, threw a half uh, uh, a half eaten donut in a Metro performer's. Uh, guitar box and you know you also that he had that reaction on his face like what, what the fuck uh, this this nigga doing like it's shit like that and there's other scenes where it's just it's comedy and wacky hijinks and slapstick it's obviously for like you know the smaller the the the, the younger view the younger viewers of this film which is also another thing I'll talk on to later on so yeah the comic the comedy is, is you know hit or mess and whatnot. Some of it is funny, 
some of it's hit or miss, some of it's just goofy shenanigans, you know, made for the obvious, you know, younger audience or younger viewers of this film and whatnot. So, yeah, that's what it is, bro, on the whole comedy thing. But, yeah, back to 22. When we see when we see her prior, more or less, getting into Jeff's body, we we she obviously, you know, had, a, of course, a nihilistic view on, you know, how all this shit works and stuff, right? And, of course, you know, when she gets into Jeff's body, you know, she's awkward. She's kind of alien. She don't really know what the fuck is going on. It's like the whole world is like giving a monkey a lighter at this point. Like they like it's like giving a man it's like giving a sword to a man who can't dance. You know, that's kind of the whole thing, which also kind of leans more to that wacky hijinks of the film. Like she eats pizza and she start liking it, which kind of reminds me of that scene from Little Nicky when he first ate uh, Popeye's chicken. Popeye's chicken is fucking awesome. And, that's pretty much what pizza was for her, and you know, you know her trying to get more accustomed to new things. You know, fish out of water and whatnot. You know, type scenario going on, and that also goes into the more wacky hijinks of the film, which is hit or miss, if you want. It, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah, there was that, um, and pretty much Jeff uh, Jeff Gardner is obviously you know the the voice of reason. You know, he's the He's the he's the teacher to you know the inexperienced uh, twenty two, and whatnot, and pretty much literally, some, some when they're together, I actually like the com the com camaraderie for the most part in this film, but it's also kind of gets a bit a uh, drown out with all the wacky hijinks and comedy in this film, and honestly, I wish they kind of elaborated more, especially with all the the topics this movie kind of deals with. And shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, one of the most or where the where the message of this film, where it kind of you know becomes really apparent, so to speak, blatant, you know, a bit, is when obviously he goes to the barber shop and, you know, he's saying, you know, of course, you know, 22 speaking through Jeff's body, you know, he's talking about like, for a long time I didn't think life and all this afterlife and resurrection wasn't anything, but. You know, going through this man's body, I kind of started, you know, actually, you know, finally seeing, you know, why people are so thrilled with this and want to live so much and whatnot. And we get a really touching scene, admittedly, where Jeff's friend, the, the guy of the fade, uh, the guy of the fade, the, the barber, you know, he say like, yeah, I wanted to be um, a dancer. I think that's what it was. Or something, you know, in, in media related. But he was like, but, you know, I got in a, uh, I became a barber and whatnot and all that. And, you know, I kind of found out what I really like, bro. Like, you know, this is this is really my true calling and whatnot. Like, you know, it was on some real shit. It, it, it was on some real feel-good shit, you know. You know, like, you, it's, like, it's one of those scenes where you kind of do relate with. Like, it gets, you know, shit off your chest and whatnot. And that's pretty much what one of the most defining themes I got from the film. It's like, more or less, don't chase the money. Don't even chase the fame. Don't even try to, like, be a big shot. Like, the key to happiness, bro, is just pursuing what you like. And that's essentially what that was to me, the whole thing. Like, no, I don't want more. I'm contempt. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm used to this. I love this lifestyle. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it for the world. And pretty much that's what it, it may seem forced at some points, but you still got the message. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that Disney didn't, like, you know, sugarcoat this or anything. Like, they gave it as it is. I mean, it's funny that Disney, of all people, would make a social commentary about, you know, just being satisfied with the small shit in life. But, yeah, for the most part, it was a really touching film. Uh, I mean, touching part with the whole film is it's pretty touching in itself. But, yeah, that film, it really did speak high volumes about the message they were trying to push. And they did it, you know, again, they, they did it with respect and whatnot. So, yeah, there's that. Um, and pretty much, of course, you know, 22 kind of adapts to this whole life thing. And, you know, they go to the whole weird spirit guy, you know, 
that's like you know apparent you know the weird spiritual hip hipster a hippie guy you know to see if they can find a way to get re uh, so you can find a way to get resurrected i mean this film wants us to root for uh jeff but at the same time you know he is kind of selfish because he was literally he, he willingly literally got someone else caught up in his own conflict just to uh, get back to life just to get a a, a gig at a at a at a jazz band which you know kind of results in you know yeah it brought him happiness but he wasn't satisfied knowing that he literally had to suspend the the, the life of another which which kind of also where the logic of this movie to me anyway kind of breaks a little bit where for some reason i guess he had all the memorabilia from you know 22 as she was jeff in his body and i guess somehow he played on a piano and he got back to the afterlife and pretty much literally he tells her like for a long time you know i was you know, goes to 22, he's, you know, getting shit off his chest. Despite, you know, the logic to me kind of just was kind of wonky. Like, or did he die on the piano and go back? Did, how did that work? Hell, even the soul counselors who were all named Jerry. Yeah, that was kind of like a running gag thing. It's a, it's that, like, again, the, the comedy, it's, it, it's funny in parts. And some of it is really love it or leave it. It, it leaves a, a lot of the comedy is you know yeah you know it's 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 whatever like you might get a laugh of it you might not it's obviously catered for a more younger audience i mean some things was just you know it's just it's what it is with the humor in this but yeah it pretty much goes to 22 and yeah even the gods were kind of flabbergasted by you know the whole plot hole about how you get there in the first place and you know of course you know she gets resurrected through you know jeff was like you know you 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 say you know for a long time he's only just like one you know dream big and shit always want to do music but he's like at the same time like i, I was always so dissatisfied with my life always so just completely distraught with all the shortcomings in my life well i don't realize that sometimes all this struggling all this all the little shit that you know was flown in my face like uh, a biker when a fly hits their windshield it's like it's just you know it's worth it the small shit in life the the most minuscule shit in your life bro is actually worth it and that's pretty much literally the grandiose you know message of the film i mean it, it obviously had the whole you know be yourself do your thing chase your dream when it came to Jeff as a character, like his character arc, yeah. You know, it's your standard Disney shit. I mean, that was literally the same message behind Ratatouille and Moana and, and Coco and, 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 and Little Mermaid and, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. But how this movie, I guess you would say, subverts it, it's is that the whole chase your dream, but no one else wants you to do it thing. It's subdued and it's only represented with one character instead of it being the overall grandiose you know message of the film the grandiose message of the film is when he had the discussion with 22 when he went back to the afterlife and he was saying for a long time always got upset always got let down always got you know held back by the small shit in life but i came to the realization that the small shit in life i tend to actually got the most enjoyment from I mean, it was already worse enough his boss pretty much was kind of pushy. I mean, she still said to him and shit, but she was still kind of pushy. And, yeah, it just may have uh, relieved him to doing something he likes. But at the same time, he became so blinded chasing the big dream and realizing all the shit around it actually was actually was what really brought him joy in the first place. It inspired him to keep moving on. And sometimes the little shit, every step you take kind of does matter in the long run despite that you you know brushed and walked past it and that's pretty much the whole grandiose message of the film which really speaks high truth about shit like some people want riches and fame and all that but they never want to be happy like like people think that shit can bring happiness but it's never the case and that's what the the whole barber scene was literally about uh, his little friend at the barber that's literally what that was all about 
and shit. So yeah, overall, it's a really good message, like in general. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, if I have any afterthoughts about this film in general, like it was on some true shit. I liked it, but to me, it should have really spent more time in establishing the camarad the camaraderie between Twenty Two and Jeff, like the like. The fact that this film kind of, you know, deals with messages like death and reincarnation, you know, some a lot of, you know, really religious and, you know, spiritual people, you know, believe in shit like that. Like, like it deals with all these topics at a really surface level, so to speak. I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't boring or anything. And, you know, it didn't take you out of it. But I feel like this movie should have had... It should have been a bit grittier, not edgier, not profoundly edgier, just a bit grittier. When you're dealing with topics like death and resurrection and ghosts and all that, I thought, you know, if this the the you, the the writers were kind of like, but actually really pushed the envelope on it, or maybe the movie just didn't call for it. Maybe sometimes a little, you know, tongue in cheekness, for lack of better words, and you know, like. Simply just poking at something is enough to get the point across. I mean, that's my only, that's literally my only real complaint about this film is that it tends to jump to A and B a lot. I mean, it tends, yeah, jump, it jump to A to B, point A to point B real quick, which is not a problem, but I just feel like there's just so much more time spent on just establishing those characters more. Especially with, you know, the topics this movie discussed being about death and resurrection and reincarnation and, you know, finding your purpose. But really, the whole time, everything you do when you, when I wake up from bed, when I brush my teeth, when I fucking spend four hours picking out my afro. Like, it's, it's always small shit like that alone that really means a lot. And you may not even think it until it's gone. And pretty much when you reach that, 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 when you reach the precipice of, you know, fame and fortune and, you know, impeccability, for lack of better words, I don't even think that's the real word, but <laughs> you, you honestly would just look back and like, you know, it was all this small shit that brought me up here and, yeah, you always got to keep moving forward, but at the same time, this shit around me, the, the small shit in life. Like, every hair, every crumb, like, is the reason, made me who I am in the first place. It, it gave me my, my identity. It's what I've grown accustomed, it, it, gives, it, make, it gives me my real purpose, the, the smaller shit. This is a goal. Yeah, goals are good to, complete, to, to get to, but when the, more, the more minor aspects in your life actually inspire you the most. And, yeah, pretty much, that's pretty much what I got from it. You know, sometimes some people are satisfied with having less, but, yeah, they, that's pretty much what my interpretation. There's no such thing as understandings. There's only interpretations. You must always remember that. When you, when, when I go into most films, you know, that really do social commentary, I've always keep that in mind. Or when I read any proverb of the likes of Confucius or, Lao Tzu or Emmanuel Kant or Voltaire, you know, always, or, or uh, whatnot, or Dick Gregory, like, always keep that mindset. But pretty much, yeah, that's the whole, more or less, thing this film's trying to push. I mean, quite frankly, me personally, I already said, like, maybe sometimes you don't have to do much to push a message, push, push a message. But to me, I feel like this film could have really pushed the envelope. It should have been a bit more grittier. And not like edgy, greedy, like blood or, you know, her sadness and all that. But I feel like, you know, it should have done that most. It, it should have, it should have really tackled those, those topics. Like if you're going to do something, you got to do it with your whole heart. And that's why I feel like this movie kind of missed out on me. Some people say, nah, it's just fine. Like some things don't need, you know, further evaluation, which is also fine. I mean, a basic plot is fine as long as it's not too tropey, too generic. So, yeah, there's also that. But to me, anyway, I feel like they should have really uh, put their whole foot in it in terms of, you know, discussing really grave topics like that, especially just being a kid's film and all, you know. Kids don't really know anything about, well, well I wouldn't say they don't know anything about uh, death because 
people all my life as a kid, they always just thought it was fucking stupid, like teachers and principals and shit. Like, it's fine and all. Like, yeah, you a kid, you don't know shit, but you kind of acting like, you know, you fucking caveman. So I'm not saying, like, kids don't understand death, but it is a topic that really doesn't speak the same volume to a child as it does an adult. And I feel like this movie could have really elaborated more on that. And, you know, that shit, that, you know, the whole message this film, the whole, my whole little just tangent just now could really be applied to all the shit that's going on, like the black community, bro. Like, you got so many brothers and shit, you know, trying to make it, which is fine. Like, I'm all about it. I mean, I'm literally in that same, like, like road right now myself, like. Who ain't? Like, you always want to improve. You always, you always want the best for yourself and shit. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you always got to reflect on where you came from. And that's what's really important. And that can be applied for, for the black community. Especially in this time, in this month, you know, Black History Month and whatnot. You really think about that. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I got here and shit, like, and all that. But I can't completely turn a blind eye on what got me here in the first place, what made me who I am, you know, in the first place. Like, you always got to keep your sense of self when you get to any plateau, remember how uh, zenith or nadir it is. Like, you always got to keep, you always got to keep your spunk and, and whatnot. You always got to remember even the most tiniest shit that still got you here. Like, everything in life matters in one way or another. Memory is, uh, is, is, it's, it's, Memories, a beautiful thing, and that's why I like to keep it a lot. And, and a lot of folks, you know, looking like me and shit like that, you know, just people in general, like just on a whole grand scale, like really, you need to actually also learn that too. You know what I'm saying? Like it's always like people say, don't sweat over small shit, but sometimes the small shit can actually bring you to to, to to great, you know, distances, great miles. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, don't sweat about them, but don't forget them because it still makes you who you are as a person at the end of the day. And, you know, that shit could be applied to, you know, black folks and shit and, you know, all this COVID shit going on. You know what I'm saying? You know, the whole preaching, you know, the whole protest and all that. Like, sometimes, you know, take real great love into every aspect of your life, everything that you approach in some way will, yeah, not affect your future, but still in some way still leaves a sort of impact to it. So, yeah, there was that. I mean, the overall tone and atmosphere of this film is like, or has that really feel good, like almost benevolent, but not entirely like spiteful and, an anguish tone to it. it. It's it keeps it spunk. I'm spitting everywhere. God damn it. The fuck. But yeah, and the tone, you know, it works. Like we got Angela Bassett and shit in this film. Like it's just it really. It's a really good. It's a feel good film. And and it and it got soul. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tasteless. I know. But yeah, you know, I'm just saying. It's a really good film. The tone is great. The characters, although I think like I feel like they should be flushed out a bit more, they were st- they still got the job done. They they still had a convincing com- camaraderie. They were likable for the most part. The the comedies hit or miss. The animation is just like anything I would expect from Pixar. It's still great. I mean the 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 art the the character models are also kind of eh, whatever I mean it's cartoony but some things just don't work in 3D I guess so it's it's kind of hit or miss I guess with the whole character modeling and whatnot oh there's that and um, you know the film is really apparent to shit right now and you know people really need to actually think about you know what really fucking matters like is it the journey or 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 is it the goal. Or is all the things that influence the journey? Like, it's shit like that. This this movie will make you question. So, yeah, I'm going to have to get this movie. Um, shit. 
an exceptional, yeah, an exceptional tilting, just a, a tad bit, like like a like a like a baby ant, baby plankton, subatomic, microscopic, minuscule, any fucking word in the mathematical book that means small or scientific book that means small into adequate. And simply because of the lack of of, uh, of character development, me personally, that I found in this film, as well as the comedy being really hit or miss. But quite frankly, it was still a good movie. I'm glad I actually put time to it. I didn't think I actually would give two shits about watching it, but I'm glad I did. You know, still got some out of it. Like, everything you do in this life, bruh, there's always something you you gotta. There's always something that is gonna offer you, and that's what you can get from this film and pretty much any piece of media, rather if it's bad or good, you can get. So yeah, you already know the drill, man. Like and subscribe. You know, uh, comment. Tell people you like. Tell people you don't like about this channel. Skeptic Optops and shit. You know what I'm saying? And y'all yeah, be blessed, bro. Sometimes I feel that way too. Like, it's always like small shit too that always be holding me back sometimes. Like, I don't feel like be doing nothing but just sleeping. Like, when, you know, the cold wind blows, so to speak. But, you know, I got to get back on the horse. I'm like, but still, you know, failure is a, is, is a necessary teacher. And the only thing you got to do now is just get back up and take another jab to the fucking face. I mean, that's what living is all about. Having shortcomings. Just this. Uh, having upbrings and shit, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's about it, y'all. You know the drill and shit, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Y'all take care and shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, you stay away from this whole COVID shit and, st and stuff. So yeah, that storm is watching, y'all. Love y'all.